But I do want to talk about some things that we might be underreacting to. That's right, underreactions on a Thursday. Let's switch up for you guys. And the team that I really am going to say I love what they did in free agency the most, they won free agency, in my opinion, is the Washington Commanders. Can we talk about them for a minute? They haven't made huge, flashy moves, right? Uh, but, okay, Adam Peters, their new GM, I'm interested. You've got me. You've got my attention because I like under the radar. I like underselling and over delivering. And he quietly added a bunch of nice little pieces, veterans that, you know, have made the roster more well-rounded. If you look at the grand scope of it and how it works out, Washington gets themselves a stud, pound-for-pound -pound champion, Austin Eckler, at an absolute steal. They bring in veteran leadership of Bobby Wagner, perennial all-pro. Talked about this at length yesterday. We love seeing that. Um, Dan Quinn will be super interested uh, in his services, and he's still at the top of his game. Um, upgrades for the shaky O-line. I mean, let's talk 62 sacks, I believe, 63 sacks, 64 sacks, something like that for Sam Howell last year. Um, they yeah, they, you know, Allegretti will help with that. They land two talented Panthers defenders. Uh, I can't believe Chin went there. I don't know what Carolina is doing, but it's to the commander's game here. A few more of Dan Quinn's former Cowboys. They took a swing on Zach Ertz. Veteran leadership is nice. It's nice for this team that is celebrating, rebuilding, rebranding, uh, and, you know, have different ownership not super uh, NFL what you're used to ownership. So it's nice to sort of have those roots come and plant in this area. I like that. I really do. Um, and that's like half of the roster that Peters has overhauled already, as you're seeing. Like, Adam, we see you. I don't think he's done yet either because he's got like 60 million to work with still. And let's not forget the draft. I'm excited for them. They've got the number two overall pick. They have two second rounders. They have two third rounders. I like uh, underselling and over, or like I like, yeah, underselling and over delivering, as we all know. Dare I say this? Dare I say this? I'm gonna say it. What they're doing right now, this is a little early, it's ahead of the draft. We'll see after all things shake out in the Motor City here in April. It's giving, it's giving Texans free agency last year. That's what this is giving. They didn't get the big names. No flashiness. No, but respected vets, okay? When, when Casario and co. were like, let's bring in Robert Woods. Let's bring in Devin Singletary. Let's bring in Jimmy Ward. Those dudes were all a huge part of their run to the playoffs. It's easier said than done to, like, replicate that kind of a turnaround. I'm not, that's why I'm, like, kind of wanting to make the comp, but not really. Like, I don't want to put that on their shoulders of Adam Peters and company. But they're... They're up. They're up. Like, they could do this. And they're going to have to cross the draft to do that with all that stock available. I've sort of changed things around. Like, are they going to land a playoff spot? Maybe. What's the quarterback situation? Oh. But um, I love the start to the offseason for the, the new regime uh, and the vibes that are happening. I don't know what to make of, of how the offense is all going to come together, of course, with the big new pieces. But we shall see. And um, speaking of the Texans, I think they're the next team as underreactions go on the show. And you guys can, of course... Tell me who you think won free agency. Yeah, I actually wore earrings today. It's like the first day I've worn jewelry all year. It's fine, but it's New Year's. It's New Year's, so we, have to, we had to do that. Um, I see Carolina trading up. Interesting, interesting. Washington signed a lot of vets, but to three-year deals may cost them cap-wise in years three. Aging squad. Okay, let's not be negative, Joseph Gomez. Um, yeah, they've got good pieces. I can't wait to see what they do. I do want to talk about the Texans here. We're underreacting to them. Last year was all about rebuilding, rehauling, and strengthening a foundation of a roster. And this year, Nick Casario has sort of a luxury and a big responsibility of going all in around C.J. Stroud. They go and land a superstar pass rusher in Daniel Hunter. They pair with Rookie of the Year sensation Will Anderson Jr. They trade with the Bengals to get Joe Mixon. They bring back Dalton Schultz. They made a Ser I mean, a series of other moves, serious moves to strengthen that front seven and even added all pro punter Tommy Townsend. We're going to talk punters here. They add him from the Chiefs, right? So as teams at the top of the AFC, like the Bills and the Ravens, they've shed, they've like lost key pieces. Houston, 
They're gearing up. They're gearing up to strike in Stroud's rookie contract window in his sophomore season. Um, and they want to jump from a cute, fun story, inspirational, confidence-giving to a legit contender, okay? They, they don't want to be a story. They want to be a threat. And they will be with how this is going right now. I don't know if I'm ready to, to you know, put them in the threat zone yet. In the AFC, I want to see how the rest of the offseason plays out. But D'Amico, Casario, you have our attention. And I would not be surprised if this team is pushing for an AFC title here soon. And I'd like it for them. What, what, what could be cooler? Um, okay, if you guys uh, are hitting me up with Cowboys aren't doing a damn thing. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Eagles have wings. Okay, Panthers. I don't know what the Panthers are doing either, guys. Texans aren't even winning the division. <sighs> Can we block people on our chat just for the day? I'm a quick block thrower. I'm a, I'm blocking everybody lately. So so uh, yeah, get, get your negativity out of here. Stuff twenty three says I like what the Texans did. They got even better. A uh, thank you. Deshaun Jackson is coming on the show. We have Darius Butler, two two absolute beacons of positivity and optimism hanging out on our show. So um, excited about that. We're doing underreactions. So I think we're underreacting to the commanders and what they did in free agency, adding solid, quiet veteran pieces. The Texans for what they're doing now in the striking strike zone of how do we get uh, another layer, though it's such, such overwhelming uh, demand on the, a target on the shoulders in the back of C.J. Stroud after what he did. Like, how does he, how do, how do you back that up? How do you, that's like when, you know, a, a tar, an artist wins Grammy of the Year on a new album, how do they put out the second album? What do you do that's possibly better? There's a lot of pressure that comes with that. Um, but finally, I think we are really underreacting to the busy, busy, busy free agency, the start of it that we saw from the Packers. Okay, this is a franchise that doesn't make big splashes, okay? They they went in. They went for it on Monday, and I love it. And the way that we were talking about it on the call earlier this week, I was like, when's the last time, like, the Xavier McKinney thing, you know, when's the last time they did that? They don't do that. Was it Charles Woodson back in 2006? Like, long, long, long time. And to me, it showed that Matt LaFleur and what he said that I played on the replayed on the show, what he said about their playoff loss and that window wasn't just lip service, you know, or good eyebrows talking. It wasn't it. That wasn't just that. This team isn't satisfied with being ahead of schedule or like, oh, look what we were able to. Jordan Love and getting to the divisional round last year wasn't enough for them. They're going for the throat. And the NFC looks wideish open yet again. Um, they signed Josh Jacobs. Love that. Four-year deal. They cut Aaron Jones. Didn't love that. But from a business perspective, and it's hard to make those decisions, especially with a guy like Aaron Jones who's done so much and meant so much. Those are hard moves to make. They did it. They opted to get younger, took a bit of a risk, give the long-term deal to the 26-year-old instead of Jones, who was doing an extension and turns 30 this season. It Makes sense from a Packers perspective. Then, of course, McKinney, four years, 68 million. Like, that's crazy. Tough to say, bye, you know, bye to somebody who's been a positive force in the team in a guy like Aaron Jones um, and adding McKinney. But if I'm a Packers fan, I am pumped to see this front office open up their wallets and be aggressive. The window is here. And by the way, the only other memorable free agency that we've seen from the Packers over the last 30 years was Woodson, of course, like I mentioned, and 1993 with Reggie White. Okay, both of those. Led to Super Bowls within four years. Just saying, when they get aggressive, it kind of works out in their favor.